Hey, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about doing a screen replacement inside of Fusion. It's more than just putting a screenshot over something. There's more to it than that. Don't be like every TV show. There's more proness to be had. Let's, let's do it. Let's go. All right, let's take a look at what we're gonna be making today. Oh, look at that. Oh, baby, it's just a normal shot, isn't it? Or is it? Let's take a look at our original footage. This is what we started with. So we're gonna go over the entire process of replacing this screen. And all of that magic is gonna happen in Fusion. I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter just because it's easier to render and record and such. We have a couple seconds of this shaky footage and it's added to our timeline. Let's just go ahead and click on Fusion and that'll bring this into our Fusion comp. So the first thing that we need to do is deal with this being shaky. If you have a lockdown shot, you can skip this, but we're gonna have to track this motion. The way that we do that, select our first node. I'll hit shift spacebar for the select tool menu and I'll type P-L-A-N. That'll bring up our planar tracker right there. I'll hit return. And now we have that attached to our media in. The planar tracker pretty much just looks at an area of the image and kind of tracks it all at once. The area that we wanna track is this green screen. So I'm gonna zoom in and just add a point at every corner here. And I don't need to be too precise with this part of things. I'm just basically just selecting, just roughly selecting my screen. So now we should have this just outlined like this. Now let's go over to the inspector. The inspector is where we change all of the fancy things about this tracker. Operation mode will leave at track. Reference time we're gonna set because I just, like a pro, just kind of started at any willy-nilly any frame, which is actually fine for this. And tracker, let's keep it point. Motion type perspective, everything else is good. And whichever frame we drew this on, that's where we wanna start. And now I'll track this forward using this button right here, track to end. Let's see how it does. There, it does a pretty good job. So we tracked the last part of the image. We can tell by these little keyframes here that are showing up in our timeline. But now we want to track the beginning. To quickly do that, we can hit go, and that'll bring us back to frame 10. That's our playhead right there. And now we can track to start, and that'll track the rest. So the idea is that we have these little white tick marks throughout the entire shot. That means that it's tracked the whole shot. And now a lot of our tracking work is done, but what do we do with it? Well, we're gonna use something called a corner pin. All that does is pretty much tell each corner of whatever image we add to this exactly where to be. So over here in our inspector, under operation mode, I'm gonna switch that to corner pin. And that's gonna put this random shape just in the middle of our canvas here. And our job is to take each corner and put that where the corners of our screen should be. And I'm gonna put that just a little bit outside of our real corners, just a little bit bigger. I roughly throw those in there for the moment and we'll zoom in and make sure they're good. Now that we have the corners set up, anything that we attach to this planar tracker is gonna stretch in between all of these corners. So in our media pool, I have our convenient computer screen and I'll just drag this down into our nodes. We'll put that like right there and take the output and connect that to our green output on the planar tracker and look what happens. Bloop, puts that over our screen. All right, that's the tutorial, bye. No, just kidding. A lot of times you'll see this on kind of a lower budget movie or a TV show or something. This is how they replace the screen. This is like a personal pet peeve of mine because it's not that hard to make this look realistic. Right now it looks, it just looks, I don't know, it just looks too bright, too perfect, too fake. And I mean, it works okay, but man, it's obvious that you just did a screen replacement. So how do we make this a little bit more realistic? There's a couple main factors here. The first one is the motion, which we have down pretty well. Let's check that. If we zoom in here. We play this back. It shouldn't be obviously moving different or slipping around. It seems like it works pretty well. So that's fine. Another dead giveaway is the sharpness. So if we were to zoom in here, we can see the edges of things aren't really that sharp, but they sure are sharp in our screen that we added. We also have this kind of sharp outline here around our screen, which isn't that realistic. You wouldn't probably see this in real life because the little edge of the screen would cover this up. Let's fix both of those things. The first thing is we need to make this screen as blurry as the edge of this screen because they're at the same distance from the camera. The way to do that is just add a blur node. I'll take this blur node and add it after our media two. And by default, it's probably gonna work okay. It's about a one pixel blur. 
which if your camera's in focus, that's probably about right. You could maybe boost it up just a touch more, 1.5. And now this should look pretty close to the softness of the screen versus the softness of the edges here on our fake screen. So here's before and here's after. It's a really subtle blur, but it makes a big difference. And this is already looking a little bit more believable. The other thing I wanna do is crop out these little sharp edges here, which we can do with a crop node. So let's select media two. I'll hit shift spacebar and type C-R-O-P and enter. And that'll bring up crop. I'm gonna select crop and hit two on the keyboard. That's just going to bring this up right here. And really what we wanna do is just cut off the edge pixels. I happen to know this screen is 1920 by 1080. So if we crop this to 1920 by 1080, we'll basically have nothing happening here. But if we check keep centered and then bring this size down to 1918, it's two pixels smaller, and then the Y size to 1078, two pixels smaller, then we kind of get rid of that edge. Check this side too, looks good. So now we've kind of just cropped that little sharp edge off, and if we go back to our media out, things should still look good, and now we don't have that sharp edge there. Looking nice. That all goes a long way. It's definitely looking better, but there's a couple more things that really give this away. The biggest one is probably the brightness just how bright and how dark this screen is compared to the rest of the shot. Because a camera can only record a certain range of brightness. And chances are, if this screen is lit up, it's probably not the darkest thing in the shot, but it is right now. We have this really dark area here, and nothing else in the shot is really that dark. Now, it's possible this could be the brightest thing, but we have some windows in the background, and chances are those are pretty bright too. So I would doubt that this chrome bar is going to be the brightest thing in the world. So how do we set the brightness to match the shot? This is actually really easy in Fusion. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Let's grab the media in two. And before we do anything, I'm gonna drag a color corrector node here in between media in two and the crop. And this is just gonna let us adjust the colors for the screen. One thing I'll do over here in the inspector is on this third tab, click pre divide post multiply. It'll just limit the color correction to the screen, which we might not actually need to do in this situation, but it's good habit to get into. Let's switch back over to our first tab here, and we're gonna scroll down to lift, gamut, and gain, which if you're familiar with color correction, that'll ring a bell. Basically, the lift is the darkest parts of the image. So if we grab this lift and we bring it up, that pushes up the darkest parts of the image. You can double click to reset. The gain is the brightest parts of the image. Okay, those are the ones that we're gonna be really worried about right now. Basically, we just want our gain and our lift to match the darkest parts of this image. And this is actually a really nice way to do this because we can actually just sample the darkest parts of the image and just set our lift to that. So let's zoom in here and find like a really dark part. And I'm just gonna mouse over this. If I look way down here on this little bar, you can see it's showing me some data. And right here, it has the RGB values. So right now they're 0 0.8, 0 0.2 nine, somewhere in there. That's the number that we want to set our lift to because it's about as dark as things get. So looking down here, you can see where it says color RGB. It says 0.9, 0.9, 0.11, 0.13, 0.11, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28
To do that, we're actually gonna use this same tracking information, but we're gonna use it in a different node. So a little trick, if we select planar tracker and go over to the inspector, right here where it says corner pin, we can actually just switch this back to track. And if we do, it gets rid of the composite, but that's okay for a minute. So we just wanna go down and hit create planar transform. When we make that, it'll make a new little node, and this holds all of our tracking information. So we can use this to add other stuff to our shot. Before we do that, I'll go back to planar tracker and switch this back to corner pin. So now everything's okay. But now we can take this planar transform and we can apply this same motion to other stuff. So let's grab a color corrector node like this. And we wanna color correct this original image, but just around the keyboard. So we gotta take this original image first of all and pipe it into our color corrector. So I'll just take our media in and drop that on our color corrector. And we'll merge our color corrector on top of our planar tracker right there. So now really all we're doing is just taking the original footage and putting it over our comp. But we only want this to happen right where the keyboard is. So let's add a mask to our merge. With our merge selected, I'll select the polygon mask and I'm just gonna draw a rough shape around our keyboard like that. And now we're just compositing that keyboard image back on top of itself. So if I were to grab the color corrector node and make this really pink, we can see it's just happening right there. We could also take this opportunity to feather out our mask a little bit. So I'll select polygon one and let's go to the soft edge and just soften that out just a touch. There we go. We don't want this pink. Let's grab the color corrector and we'll reset that. And then I'll just scroll down to saturation and bring the saturation down. So that gets rid of that green tint right there. Here's before and here's after. So that's pretty good, but this isn't going to move along with our footage until we add the tracking information to it. So I'll take this planar transform and I'm gonna put this in between our mask and our merge. Hold down shift and drop that there. So that should be connected. And yep, that's moving along with our tracking info. Then we can set this and desaturate it. Okay, so our comp's working pretty well. One last thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of a reflection here because you don't generally get such a nice looking screen. Usually there's some kind of glare and we're gonna do just the cheapest, most hack job glare we could ever do. Let's grab a background node and let's merge it over everything. We're also gonna take this planar transform and we're gonna apply this to the background node too. I'll hit control C and control V and hold down shift and put that in between our background and our merge. That's just going to move our background along with our footage, just like we did for this mask. And let's select the background. And for the color of the background, I'm just gonna pick something from kind of back here in the window, something like that. That'll make sure that it's the right brightness and color tone and everything just to match everything else. I'll hit two on the keyboard. This is what we're doing right now, but we're gonna mask this. I'll make sure my media out is selected in our second viewer by hitting two on the keyboard. Then let's select our background and I'll add a polygon mask. And now we can just draw a really soft shape, something like this. I'm just gonna kind of draw this kind of shape and then soften it a lot and make it a little bit smaller and soften it a little more. And basically just make sure this is on top of the screen and just looks like a rando shape. Yeah, something like that. And this should move along with our track and it does. And this is obviously way too crazy. So let's select our merge where this is being composited and we'll grab blend, which is like the opacity of the merge, blend it all the way down and then we'll boost it up just so you start to see it very subtle, something like that. So that just adds a little bit of imperfection here. And dial this in just a little more, something like that. So now we have a really realistic looking composite that doesn't look like it's just <laughs> obviously a screen or a place. And there are some other things you can do to sell this even more, but that's the basics. So there we go. There's more of a realistic screen replace comp. I think that turned out okey doke, don't you? If you wanna learn some more about Fusion, whoosh, here's five Fusion tips that I think are just the bee's knees. The bee's knees. That kind of sounds like the business. I wonder, is the business a thing? Where did bees' knees come from? Do bees have knees? I feel like they're just like, the, the little, their little legs are just curvy, like, like the Adventure Time legs. <laughs>